Let's talk more about the COVID news on this morning. Dr. Samir Gupta is back with us today, a regular contributor to our program and a respirologist and associate professor in the Department of Medicine at the University of Toronto. Good morning, Dr. Gupta. Morning, Heather. You know, you're joining us just as I've been reporting on the case numbers. They are soaring, Dr. Gupta, to records that many parts of the country have not seen in this pandemic, nearly two years in. It's quite extraordinary. And what I keep hearing in my mind is something a Quebec doctor said earlier this week on our network, saying that we're in for a short, sharp wave. What do you think? Where are we now? What are we going to see in the next few weeks? Yeah, we're, where we are now is pretty scary in terms of case numbers, uh, over 11,000 a day across the country, which is which is as high as we've seen from the beginning of the pandemic. Um, there's good and there's bad with that. You know, the bad is that the, the, the way we're able to get to 11,000 cases a day, despite that over 75% of people have had two, vaccine, two vaccines in them, is that this particular variant is able to infect vaccinated people disproportionately compared to previous variants. Um, but the good news is that people who are vaccinated with two shots and particularly with three shots remain very well protected from severe disease. So there's a little bit of both there. There's a vulnerability to getting infection, but still much less vulnerability to getting severe disease. Um, I think we will see a high wave. How short it will be, hard to, hard to judge, hard to know. Partly depends on what measures we take as a society to curb that wave. We are seeing some drastic measures again in many provinces as they see that burden that pressure um, but i think the duration of the wave largely is a function of that uh, and and you can see from other parts of the world in south africa it went high and it was short relatively short and that it's coming down but uh, again that depends on the conditions that we put around it the rate of spread is right now overwhelming the testing capacity and so i'm wondering how we'll even have a complete and accurate picture of what is happening with omicron in canada or with these numbers i mean does it even matter are there other metrics which become even more important dr gupta yeah i mean ever since we've had a significant number of canadians vaccinated we've talked about the fact that we shouldn't focus so much on case numbers and much more on illness how sick are people getting because the point of vaccination is more so to prevent severe illness than to prevent illness at all or you know any infection um so you're absolutely right that the daily case numbers are less meaningful and they're even less meaningful in the context of the fact that people are having a hard time getting tested uh, the fact that we're at 10 percent case positivity rate for example in ontario just tells us we're not doing enough tests we need to ramp up that testing capacity because you can wait three four days to get a booking for a pcr and then two three days to get your results so it's just not it's just not useful at that point uh, so we know that many people who probably have it are not getting a pcr maybe they're getting a rapid antigen test if they're lucky um, but the daily case numbers there's going to be a ceiling on that based on how many we can do and it just will it'll stop reflecting what's really happening in the community it never really has we've always had more tests in the community but but the reality and the daily numbers will diverge more and more um, now that we're at that ceiling so we're going to want to look at hospitalizations and icu stays uh, the one wrinkle, the one caveat about hospitalizations is that when you have such a high community prevalence like we do now, uh, when people get hospitalized for whatever reason, we always screen them for the most part. We're screening them for the virus. And what you're getting is because you have so much community prevalence of the virus, people who are being hospitalized are also, some of them are coming up positive for the virus, and they'll be counted in the Omicron hospitalizations, in the, in the COVID hospitalizations. Whereas in many cases, they're not there for the COVID. It's, it's, it's a side thing that we discover. They're there for some other reason. Okay. So we've got to also be careful about how we interpret those hospitalization numbers. But uh, as we watch the hospitalization numbers, based on what I'm going to share with you, hopefully they'll stay as low as possible. The Globe and Mail, I'm just, just seeing this literally just a few minutes ago, Dr. Gupta. This is a Globe and Mail reporting this morning about how the government in Quebec floating the idea of asking asymptomatic healthcare workers to stay on the job if they test positive. Other provinces considering test to stay strategies. We've seen those in, in schools, for example, trying to keep staffing levels up as Omicron spreads so quickly and so broadly in the Quebec government as well. Again, according to the Globe, looking into assigning staffers who are COVID positive to hot spots as long as they're not feeling sick, for example. I mean, that is quite extraordinary to hear. Does it indicate the point that we have reached in the healthcare system and what everyone is bracing for there? Yeah, I think that's what's different with this wave compared to prior waves is, um, you know, there's burnout, there's been attrition in the healthcare sector, there's all of that. But there's also just a whole bunch of people who are either quarantining or isolating. Um, and this is, you know, I have a colleague in the UK that I was talking to a couple of days ago, and they were telling me they're at one of the big London hospitals, and they were telling me that 
you know, not only are we they really seeing cases, they're now reappropriating wards as COVID wards, as they did in previous waves. But at that particular health system, you know, it was two big hospitals, 400 staff were off either quarantining or isolating. And we're seeing, we're starting to see this in our Canadian healthcare system. Uh, I was mentioning that I, I run a, a clinic in Quebec, which means I'm part of the Collège des Médecins of Quebec, and I get their emails all the time. And there was an email saying, you know, we need all hands on deck, which is kind of what every, every province is saying. But this email also said, if you're retired, we need you to come out of retirement and, and help out. And, and, and that kind of struck me, that took me aback. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's just kind of where we're at with our healthcare system. We're really desperate for help. Desperate for help. People talking about do-it-yourself contact tracing. I know you've been writing about that on your Twitter feed as well. Manitoba, another province, uh, suggesting that that is the way to go because the system is so overwhelmed. I'm wondering if you could look ahead for me, Dr. Gupta. At noon today, the Prime Minister is going to give an address on Omicron, uh, and there'll be a number of other cabinet ministers and uh, federal public health officials in attendance. We don't know what he's going to say at 12 noon to Canadians on Omicron as it's spread, but I'm wondering, at this point, what announcement would be helpful, what type of help would be worthwhile and would be needed at this point? Yeah, so, you know, public health restrictions are decided locally. You know, they're decided at the level of the province and sometimes at the level of the public health unit. It's always good to have the leadership uh, talking about risk and talking about importance of adhering to public health restrictions, to have that national voice there that this is real, this is important. Um, always important to have that voice also encouraging people to get vaccinated. We don't have bottlenecks in terms of quantities uh, of our, in terms of supply for people getting boosting. So we need that encouragement from the federal government to say, please go out and get your booster shot. Um, the other thing I think that we, we really would love to see from the federal government is more procurement of rapid tests. Um, that's something that for a long time, they had procured a bunch and distributed a bunch, and for a long time, the provinces had not used. But all of a sudden, the provinces have woken up to this and are starting to distribute. And we're at a point where now, again, there are shortages of this very precious resource. We'd love to see the federal government say, hey, we're going to procure a whole bunch of rapid tests like they just did in the U.S., and we're going to distribute these and we're going to get on this. We're going to we're going to make this our project to make sure that everybody has access to this resource. That's one thing they can do federally, at least the procurement piece and distribution piece. And I'd love to hear something about rapid tests today. Dr. Gupta, thank you for this morning. Thank you for every week. Two years nearly we've been having these weekly conversations and you continue to share your wisdom and uh, your expertise. And uh, we're very grateful as always. Thank you. Thank you, Heather.